In this video I'll be showing the most recent version of the Cascadar Bridge add-on. I have several exciting new features since the last video along with some bug fixes resulting in an improved overall stability. So let's get started. Let's work through the installation process of the add-on step by step. Begin by downloading the latest version from GitHub. Simply follow the link in the video description and select the most recent release from the release page. If you already have the previous version installed, head to the add-on section and click the remove button to uninstall it. And then install the add-on as you normally would. So navigate to edit, preferences, add-ons and install, then select the downloaded zip file. Then you will need to specify the location of the Cascader executable file if the add-on doesn't automatically detect it. Here are the default path where it will look for the executable on Windows, Linux and Mac. And once you've set the location of this file, install the required scripts for Cascader by clicking the install requirements button. If you get an error at this point, you will need to restart Blender as an administrator and try it again. And if Cascader was running during this installation, then you will need to restart it so the new commands are accessible for the add-on. Before I show you the new features, let's take an in-depth look at how the add-on operates and what's going on behind the scenes. This will provide a better understanding of the functionalities. To begin, I highly recommend using a character with a simple deformation armature when working with the add-on. Control rigs generally won't function correctly inside Cascader and some generated rigs like Rigify may have deformation bone hierarchy that won't translate well outside Blender. For complex control rigs there are some add-ons that can help you which will be covered in an upcoming video and now let's just focus on the add-on. On the end panel you will find different settings for Blender export and import. These are the same settings which you will see when manually working with FBX files. When you click the export to Cascader button, the add-on will examine your export settings and generate an FBX file in your temporary folder. It then sends the part of this file to Cascader and it will handle the importing of this file. The communication between the two software is achieved using Python's socket module. The import functions work similarly, but here you have settings for Cascader 2. The two most important options are Select Interval and Bake Action. The former only exports the intervals selected in your Cascader scene, and disabling the Bake Action will result in exporting only the keyframes from Cascader, and it will use, I think, linear interpolation between the keyframes. Here is the sequence of action during import. So first Blender will request Cascader to export the scene and it will send the necessary settings. Then Cascader will export this file to the temp folder and send the file path back to Blender. Then Blender will import this file using the selected import settings. And in all cases, after the file is no longer needed, Blender will delete it. And when you have an armature selected, the import action button becomes available. This works similarly to the export process, but with some additional steps. So after importing the scene, the add-on scans for actions available for the imported armature objects. The action will be renamed based on the corresponding scene name in Cascader and then it's applied to your armature. Finally, all the imported objects will be deleted. So now that we have a better understanding of how the add-on works, let's explore the new features. The main new feature is the batch import for both scenes and actions. Essentially these functions work in the same way but are applied to all open scenes in Cascader simultaneously. This means that if you have created multiple animations for the same character, you can import all of those actions with just one click. Just to show you an example, I have recently shipped a male base mesh in Blender. And as you can see, I currently have only the T pose as an action. And in Cascader I have different actions downloaded from Mixamo like this death animation, the locomotion, punching animation, a roundhouse kick. So if I go back to Blender and select the armature, I can click import all action. 
this will start the operation and you need to wait for a couple of seconds when the animation is exported and now if I open back Blender I can see all the death punching etc animations here all imported actions will now have the name of their corresponding scenes in Cascader this will make recognizing the actions much more convenient and also you can import all scenes like here I have different scenes opened and in using the import all scenes option it will just simply import everything Keep in mind that the import process might take some time depending on the number and length of the animations you're importing. While the default setting should work well in most cases, you might need to change the scale and orientation of the import or export functions. And once you've found the settings that works for you, you can click the save settings button and they will be kept even when restarting Blender. Also there was an issue here with the default setting in the previous version which in some case resulted in incorrect orientation but this should be fixed now. And another notable addition is the option to change the add-ons name in the end panel. You have seen this during the installation process in the add-on preferences. This allows you to merge the add-on with another panel by giving it the same name so it will appear under the same name in, on the end panel. I also tried to improve the stability of the add-on, so hopefully there will be less crashes of Cascader, but as a disclaimer, I had no prior experience with using sockets before, and I'm still not satisfied how the error handling works here, but hopefully there will be less crashes. And it's possible to run into certain issues while using the add-ons, so don't forget to save your scenes before importing and exporting. And thanks to you guys we found some issues and we were able to fix them. And also a huge thanks for helping with the Linux and Mac version. Uh, speaking of the Mac version, I'm still looking for confirmation if it works or not. If you had a chance to try it out on Mac, please leave a comment because I'm not able to test it on my side. And I'm really happy to see how many of you are interested in the add-on. It encourages me to keep working on it. You also suggested an option to bind textures automatically. I started experimenting with it, but so far I've only managed to add the start frame and texture path to the mesh, but I'm still working on finding a way to assign a behavior to the texture property. If anyone finds a solution, please let me know and I can add it to the add-on. And if you have any other suggestions for new features, leave a comment and I will try to implement it. I hope the new features can help you with your workflow.